Calls for mandatory vaccination. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a talk about the growing calls for mandatory vaccination. Now before we get started, I'm vaccinated, my children are, I may be a little hesitant over the latest one that's coming out, but in general I think they've done more good than the damage they've done for humanity. We're all living a lot longer. I don't know last time I ever met anyone that had polio or smallpox. So generally, mankind is doing quite well. Not that these things aren't without issues. But, you know, voluntarily providing something for someone to take for the betterment of all of civilization and themselves is different to forcing it upon someone. So I appreciate the argument that people make that they don't feel or they, they conscientiously object to being forced to taking something. I understand that. But let's have a look at what's being called for now. So to start with, we can see our vaccination rates. There's a lot of fear over COVID. Apparently we're not doing so well, but you've got, what, what do we have? Hang on. Over 4.5 million doses, everyone. That's pretty good. Okay, we're doing pretty well. I don't know why people seem to be worried. I suspect... A lot of the noise is political. It's a political attack against our federal leaders. What do you reckon? I mean, that's that's the game they play here, isn't it? Politicians use anything. Never forget an opportunity. Use it always to attack your opponent. It can get a bit frustrating. But let's have a look at this first call for mandatory vaccination from the National Disability Services. Mandatory COVID-19 vaccinations for the disability sector. Now, the reason why they are calling for this is because um, many disabled people have a much higher um, mortality rate than normal people with regards to COVID-19. Our little boy who has Down syndrome, they, they have a much higher hospitalization rate, everyone. So NDS's policy regarding the national rollout of the COVID-19 vac COVID vaccine is as follows. NDS considers that whenever possible, all those living in Australia should be vaccinated against COVID-19. NDS prioritizes the safety of all people with disability and disabled workforce, according oh, and the, the disability workforce. According to NDS, they strongly urges all Australian governments, federal, state and territory to take all necessary action to ensure COVID-19 vaccines, once approved by the TGA, are mandatory for all disability support workers working directly with people with disability, regardless of the setting and circumstances of this work. Mandatory vaccinations should, of course, be subject to any legislative exemptions. NDS calls on all Australian governments to support rollout of the vaccines to the sector with a comprehensive and accessible community education program with appropriate targeted information for providers, disability support workers, people with disabilities, carers and family members, suppliers and contractors. The NDS will support disability service providers to achieve high vaccination take up in the sector to provide safety of, the, of their workforce and people with disability by advocating for priority access for the sector to national stocks of the vaccine, particularly the most effective of the vaccines, development of public health information about the vaccines that are available and in easily accessible forms and languages with an emphasis on resources to assist people with intellectual disabilities and all staff paid and volunteer to have access to education programs about the vaccine and the importance of having it. I mean, here's the thing. If you're working with the disabled and you get the illness, but they have a much higher risk of dying of it, do you have a duty of care to ensure you minimize that risk you're exposing them to? There's the question. So, the NDS strongly urges all, uh, all Australian governments to provide the legislation and resources which will support the objectives set out in this statement, including action taken by providers which aim to keep their employees and participants safe from the impacts of COVID-19. Provide support to employers to manage the risks of any exemptions to vaccination, any exemptions to vaccination may pose to their clients and other employees. Support the vaccination program with a comprehensive an accessible community education campaign developed in consultation with NDS and other industries. NDS is committed to taking an active role in supporting the sector 
to have access to the best possible information regarding vaccination and to supporting best practice approaches to ensuring that any vaccination program is undertaken in the best interests of employers, employees and contractors, clients and community who are working collaboratively at this time or to this end. NDS will reconsider this policy position in light of further advice provided or decisions made by the Australian government or their chief health or medical officers. So here we have the National Disabilities Service is calling for mandatory vaccination of their support workers their support workers what do you think about that one everyone i mean if there's a higher risk to people who are disabled and it's not the only one we've got here um national cabinet are calling for mandatory vaccinations national cabinet agrees mandatory vaccination for age care workers so one group will be required to receive a covid 19 vaccine before heading to work under the new rules agreed by the federal and state government the COVID-19 jab could become mandatory for aged care work for workers after the federal and state governments agreed to the measure. Demand for mandatory vaccines have risen in recent days after Victoria's COVID-19 outbreak passed between staff and residents at Melbourne's Our, Our Care facility. Speaking after a national cabinet meeting on Friday, Prime Minister Scott Morrison revealed the nation's leaders have paved the way for the measure. I was very firmly of the view and supported uh, supported strongly by states and territories that we need to look at how we can do this safely mr morrison said mr morrison said the australian health protection principle committee had been tasked with advising how the measures could be implemented and expected a prompt report what we have asked the ahppc to do is advise us of a suitable time frame in which a mandatory vaccination of aged care workers would be suitable and safe and uh, safe from a medical perspective, taking into account the balance in risks, Mr. Morrison said. We will let them have their cons uh, consideration and advise us what would be safe, a safe period to have such a mandatory vaccination time period. Mr. Morrison said a decision on whether to impose the measure would be ultimately a matter from for the states and territories. For vaccinations to be made mandatory for aged care workers, that has to be done by public health order at a state level, as it is done for flu vaccinations, he said. See, we, we already have mandatory vaccinations here in Australia for a lot of things, everyone. The Prime Minister on Thursday told Parliament the AHPPC was unlikely to revise its advice against mandatory vaccines for aged care workers, but denied he had overridden medical advice. What uh, we want to do it safely, and that is why we've referred how to do it safely to the AHPPC, he said. I would not share the view that National Cabinet at all has gone against medical advice. We are actually seeking it. Chief Medical Officer Paul Kelly conceded a WA Health order to mandate vaccines for hotel security guards had led to work workers leaving the industry. We know that that could be an issue, and we don't want that to be an issue, he said. We want people to come forward and volunteer. Health Minister Greg Hunt revealed aged care facilities would be obliged to report all worker vaccinations from June 15. When an aged care worker has been vaccinated outside the facility, they must provide the information so we have full accounting of every facility and every aged care worker, he said. Mr. Morrison also revealed how funding for a new COVID-19 emergency payment would be shared. We've already heard of that before. But there will also be, everyone, well, legal challenges, of course, coming to this. And let's have a look through this article here while I have a shot of coffee to rest my voice a bit. So, compulsory COVID-19 vaccinations at work could face legal challenges, a lawyer warns. I wouldn't be surprised. A new industrial relations issue is on the horizon as employers begin to ask whether they can introduce a no-jab, no-job policy for staff who refuse a COVID-19 vaccine. Wow. Okay. I mean, here's the question. Should that be a right of employers? Should employers be able to freely discriminate like that? It's their business, it's their risk, uh, and people have the right to work for somewhere and not for, to work for somewhere. What do you reckon, everyone? Well, maybe we'll you know, discuss that one in the comments, guys. As the vaccination... Well, that you, you'll also have... We're having businesses who are also discriminating. The hair salon, 
doesn't want anyone vaccinated. Remember on the Gold Coast, there's a few hairdressers that are doing that. Why don't we just remove the anti-discrimination legislation and see what happens? Let the market decide. But, you know, that that's not, we're not that, you know, we're, we're too polite for that. As the vaccination program progresses and Australia moves from an elimination to a suppression strategy, the issue of vaccinations in the workplace is likely to heat up. It comes as aged care workers may soon face compulsory jabs after the federal and state government reached an in-principle agreement on the issue pending further advice from medical experts. Unvaccinated aged care workers at public facilities in Victoria are already being stood down and healthcare workers in the state cannot work in some hospital settings unless inoculated. New South Wales has similar rules for its healthcare workers regarding the flu vaccine. So can your boss sack you if you refuse to get the jab? The Fair Work Commission has recently upheld the sacking of two workers in aged care and childcare who refused the flu vaccine. But that does not necessarily mean all bosses can start sacking staff who refuse vaccinations. We cannot extrapolate from those decisions, legal academic professor Andrew Stewart from the University of Adelaide told ABC News. It's a grey area. For most employers, it leaves them in the dark and leaves them vulnerable to a legal challenge. Employers would risk falling foul of unfair dismissal and anti-discrimination laws. Mr. Stewart said, as well as issuing a public health order, states had the power to change work health and safety laws. However, he said a national approach is preferable. It requires very clear advice from the Commonwealth because at the moment every employer and their legal advisors are forced to figure this out for themselves. So support is growing for mandatory jabs in other sectors. Sandy Chong for the Australian, Hairdre Australian Hairdressing Association said she would like to have the option of making COVID-19 vaccinations compulsory for her staff who do not have health reasons to refuse. If, if legal, uh, here we go, Ms. Chong said, social distancing was impossible in hairdressing salons. I'm asthmatic and I am vulnerable if someone is not vaccinated, she argued. We need to think of the health of business owners, staff and our customers. Many are vulnerable, being elderly or, or immunocompromised. However, Ms. Chong said there there was a range of views on the issue among her members across the country well yeah we're seeing that we're seeing some salons don't even want the vaccinated into their businesses so common sense in some sectors the business council of australia ceo jennifer westercott has thrown her support behind compulsory vaccinations for some workers such as those in aged care i know that the health advice is that mandatory vaccinations aren't necessary she told rm breakfast i guess just with my common sense hat on, I say, why not? That's it. This is the Australians. You know, we've got this this mythology that we're larrikin and, and rebellious. We're not. Not really. Come on, guys. You know what? Most Australians will want, want the, the government to force other people to do this. So Qantas wants international travelers to be vaccinated but has not said uh, if it would make the jab compulsory for staff. West Farmers has announced it will give staff three hours to leave to get vaccinated. Wow. Unions want health experts to make the call. The ACTU secretary, uh, Sally McManus, said vaccination mandates should be made by medical experts, not individual employers. The same process should apply for COVID-19. Alexi Boyd, from the Council of Small Business Associations Australia said the organization had not yet discussed the issue with its members. Personally, Miss Boyd said she leaned more towards encouragement than mandatory. We have enough hats to wear. We don't have to uh, have to have a policeman's hat, she said. Legal expert uh, Professor Stewart said it is an issue that is unlikely to go away. It's a complete mess and will end up with a lawyer's picnic. Yeah, well, that's who's going to win at the end isn't it guys <laughs> the lawyers will always win so there we have it some industries that are calling for it now you've got to remember there's precedent here in australia our government has no jab no pay if you want the you know family assistance payments you need to immunize your kids you need to jump through all the hoops everyone so there's precedent precedent for discrimination based on this maybe we just need to open it up to allow for businesses to decide. But do you think Australians will put up with that? Let me know your thoughts on that one in the comments down below. 
Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create, here there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.